Okay, in Hilchus Purim, we know that there are many halachas that have to be done, many mitzvahs have to be done in Purim. It has to be done, uh, the Kriyas Megillah, of course, twice, uh, by night and by day. There is the Sudas Purim. There is Mishloi Achmanes, Matanas of Yainim, Al Anissim. Now, an interesting halacha, uh, interesting khap, uh, the Rebbe says, is the mitzvah of Adalayada, the mitzvah of Yemei Mishta Vesimcha, is different than the other ones. In what sense? The other ones have a sheer. You got Mishlayach Manish, you got to give two Manish to one person. Matanas of Yainim, you got to give two of Yainim, you got to give something. You want to give a little more, you can give more. But there are uh, Kriyas and Megillah, you have to read twice, once by night, once by day. But once you do it, you fulfill the mitzvah. However, um, uh, the your Simcha part of, of Purim, there is no time period. It's a whole day, the whole 24 hours of Purim has to be. Freyla has to be happy. How do we know that? Because when the Megillah says, name, uh, names off the mitzvahs of the day, only by the mitzvah of Simcha, Mishta Simcha, it says, Yemei Mishta Simcha, Days of happiness. Days of party. By the other, thing, it just, the other ones, it just says, and this mitzvah, and this mitzvah. So the whole day, from beginning to end, has to be happy. It's an interesting chap that the Rebbe says. But I want to talk about Mishloach Manis because a Shaila would come up if you are, now that you see the halachas that we're learning in Pasakum, and you see that Pasakum, especially according to Kabbalah and Chassidus, is not, you shouldn't just let it pass. Well, there are other people that have a terim, and based on what we're learning, pas, pas palter, the mocking for whatever excuses there may be, pas palter could be accepted. Are you allowed to send shalach manis to somebody, something that you yourself don't eat, but that person you know is more, he's more mekel. Would that be a right set of shalach manis to send? So let's just talk a little background about shalach manis, and then we'll get to this answer. First of all, there are two basic reasons why What's the reasoning behind the mitzvah of Mishloach Manas? The first reason is from the Truma Sadeshin. The Truma Sadeshin says it's partially a very practical reason. We want to make sure that on Purim, every Yid has what they need for the Suda. So to make sure that everybody has the Suda's Purim, sh- share. Share what you have with somebody else, and hopefully by that, we'll cover all our bases that every Yid will have. I, why do I have to give the rich shalach manis? Or why is one giving the rich? Because we don't make differences. We just want to cover, make sure all Yidin will have enough for the Suda. Then there is the answer to which the Manas Alevi gives. The Manas Alevi's answer is that it's not necessarily anything specific because of the Suda. It's because Haman's motive was he wanted to separate the Yidin. And he, the way he described it to Mar- to Achashverosh was Yeshnei Am Echad Mefuzor and Mefoyred Ben Amin. The Yidden are scattered all over, and we are showing the Achdus, the unity that we have, the Shalom and the peace that 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 that, that, that is amongst the Yidden. And one of the ways of Shalom, uh, spreading Shalom and spreading friendship, is by sending food items to each other, sending presents. And then, this is the reason why you send Shalach Manas. So, the big difference between the two reasons, there are many, many differences. But one of the obvious di- differences, what would be the din, except Sefer speaks, if somebody sends Shalach to, uh, to his friend, but he doesn't write his name, he, doesn't, he leaves it by the door, and he doesn't say who it's coming from. According to the reason of the Truma Sadeshen, Oh, at least the guy has food to eat Suda Spurim. What's the difference? Who gave it to him? So we're making sure the people have Suda. But according to the reason of the Manas Alevi, to show friendship, to spread peace and love amongst the people, it's important to know who it's coming from and who you're giving it to. Another difference is if you want to you, you want to give Shalach Manas, 
But the person who you're trying to give it to says, I'm not interested. I don't want your presence. Or, you know what, take it back. I forgive you. According to the Manasalevi, if you show your love, you did your part. But according to uh, the Truma Sadeshan, we have to make sure that the guy actually gets it and uses it. So think about that. We want the guy to have the Shalach Manas A, as an act of friendship, and B, as a as a uh, something that he could use for the Sudas Purim. So, if you're sending him something that you're not going to eat. So the bear hatev in Simon Tafre Sadik Hay, Seif Cotton Zion, writes like this Nistapakti, I have a doubt, I have a suffix. Misha Shalach Lechavere Tarnagoylis Trefa. Somebody who sends his friend a chicken, which we found out later that the chicken was treif. Vahula yada, and the friend got it as shalach manis, didn't know it was treif. Vahachal, and he ate the treif chicken. And then, the yoim purim atzmoi, on this day purim, they, they just found out that it was treif. So the Be'er Hatev says, I am not sure did the giver, the person who sent the Shalach Manas, did he fulfill the mitzvah? Yes or no? Because he sent him something that he is not allowed to eat. Okay? So it is brought in Shulchan Aruch and Chayshim Mishpat Simen Reish Lamedalid it says that if I sell my friend an item, if I sell him a food item and as, as the, the buyer takes it, pays for it, and we find out that the item that was sold was ha- actually prohibited. Aser minatayra. So the halacha says that the buyer does not have to pay for what he ate. Because what he ate, being that it was not kosher, he did not have real hana. Adarab, on the contrary, for him, it's actually a big tsar that even accidentally he ate an Isser Torah. So I didn't really intentionally damage you for anything. I don't have to pay you for what you gave me. However, if it was only an Isser the Rabbonon, then he would have to pay. Based on this logic, based on this Allah and Shulchan Aruch, uh, there are those that say the same would be here. If the Michael that he sends is an Isser Torah, something which is prohibited in a Torah, then you did not fulfill the mitzvah. But if, because that guy didn't get anything, that guy doesn't want it, that guy is, is sour from it. If, however, what you sent him is something which is only prohibited in the Rabbanon, then you did fulfill your mitzvah by sending it. This is only if the, if the guy who got it ate it already. Then after the fact, to discuss if you perform the mitzvah or not, will depend on this. If, however, we found out that the food that you sent him wasn't kosher before he ate it, then even if it's an Isser the Rabbonon, you did not fulfill your mitzvah. This is what the Chach Mashlema says. You did not fulfill the mitzvah of sending Shalach Manis, even something which is only Asim of the Rabbonon, unless that person is able to eat it. Why would he be able to eat it? If Nebuch is sick, and for a sick person we allow this type of food, even though it's not that kosher, then you fulfill the mitzvah. There are those that hold that not necessarily the difference will be whether it's Asim and Atayra or Asim and Rabbonan. The difference will be slightly different. The Maram Shik says this. If it's a food item that's Asr ba'achila, it's asr to eat, but at least bahana it's mutter, to sell it, to gain profit from it, even this prohibited item, is the yid could benefit from it. Then, even though the, to eat it would be asr minatayra, but at least he could have some benefit from it, this could be connected to, the, according to the Manas Halevi, I don't need it to eat, I need it to create friendship. So if he gains something, anything from having it, from getting it, then you fulfilled your mitzvah. 
So if, the bottom line, if you're in a situation somewhere in the boondocks and you have no kosher food to send to Shalach Manas, you only have non-kosher food, the bottom line would be, uh, if this is the only food you have and you want to send somebody Shalach Manas, so if it's Mutter Bahana and it's only Asr Bahila, you have the Maram Shiks Heter. If it's mut, if it's if it's aser ba'achila, but only mid rabbonon, then a lot of paiskim will allow it to pass. This that I say, that sometimes you don't you don't fulfill the mitzvah by giving something which is not edible, and it has to be for, for to fulfill shalach manis. This is only eat only unless it's prohibited mid atayra or prohibited mid rabbonon. If it's something that's not either or. It's something which you yourself are machmir. You don't eat this standard kashras. Others do. So if you send that type of food that you yourself don't eat, you're sending it to somebody else, because it's it's only a chumrah, it's your chumrah, you would be yaitzah. Or, if another example is brought, if you send your friend, an item that not everybody, the healthy people do not eat. The, the junk food items, a lot of, uh, your friend jogs and he's healthy and he swims and you're sending him junk food. But And for him, or not only junk food, you're sending him maybe something that he's allergic to. So again, it will depend what the reasoning of Shalach Manas is, but at least the food is an edible food most of the Achrayin and most of the Paiskin will say you passed the test. So let's go, let's go back to my original question. We're learning Hilchas Pas Akum. If you send somebody Pas Akum and that person eats Pas Akum, but you do not, according to the dry letter of the law, Pas Nachtim, you're allowed to eat. It's a Chumrah that you took upon yourself and, and Hasidim and the Kabbalim Take it very, very serious. But it's after all, it's not the letter of the law. It's a chumrah. It seems to be, based on this whole logic, if this is the only thing you gave for Shalach Manis, it would pass as a kosher Shalach Manis. And I'd like to finish off by wishing everybody...